Hello everyone, it's Ben here, and today I have a video for you about uh, how I'm using the Line 6 Helix in conjunction with the Line 6 Variax, uh, specifically a JTV uh, model, for my pit work that I've been doing a heap of. I did record this video yesterday, full disclosure, but it was, uh, it was just a wee bit shite. So we put it in the bin. We, we dumped that video because it wasn't very good. So we're filming it again, but you will see uh, the playing from the last video because that's that's fine. Any hoosers, as you can see in that, I, I have a gig bag back there, uh, like a, one of the Gator ones that can carry two guitars in it. Those are the two guitars that I'm taking. I'm using the PRS McCarty soap bar and of course the JTV. Um, the reason I'm using a electric along with the JTV is because I wanted something comfortable to play. Not that the JTV isn't comfortable, but something that I'm really comfortable on, which is that McCarty. So because I'm playing the majority of the show on an electric and just have a few smatterings of the, var the Variax in amongst it, I wanted to kind of hop on a guitar that, that felt like home. So that's why I'm doing the two guitars. Technically speaking, I could just do it all on the JTV and it would be fine, but I wanted to use the McCarty because it's very nice and I feel very comfortable on it. So without further ado, let's hop over to Mr. Helix behind me and I'll walk you through my patch with some sound samples. Here we go. Okay, so here we are in the studio, walking you through. I don't know why I said that in such a sing-song manner. But here we are with my Helix patch that you will see here, or here, or wherever it will be in editing. It's dead simple, really. Uh, so I'm just going to walk you through it. Uh, we'll start off with the, with the McCarty, so the electric um, input. Dead simple, we're just using uh, the deluxe in the vibrato channel just to get a little bit more top end in there. I think, it's, I think it sounds really nice. That's all there is to that. That's how we've got it EQ'd. Um, first rehearsal was last night and Cody, who's playing guitar one, is playing a Strat. So having the P90s there is a little bit of a nice kind of point of difference, fills it out uh, a little bit. Um, so it sounded good in the mix. MD was happy, guitar player was happy, everyone was happy with the sound. So that's good. So I was worried whether or not it would be too gamey, but it's, it's kind of just enough so when I dig in it kind of goes to the good spots that you want it to. There are a couple of occasions where I will throw on a bit of distortion. So I've got the Dyna drive which I find works well with the really Fender-ish kind of sounding amps in the pop. The Fender style stuff kind of works really well for that. Um, I don't have a crazy amount of gain. I don't have much. It's just there because of course with Jersey Boys we're not going heavy heavy. We're going kind of just light to light moderate gain and I, I think I only use it maybe once or twice in the whole show so that's great. flanger. So that's for a section in uh, Oh What A Night, December 63 as it's known. Uh, just in that little kind of breakdown section uh, where I play some kind of low, low chords because the chart says slow flanger. So you put a slow flanger on. There you go. That's my secret. Do what the chart tells you to do. <laughs> and then we've 
got a little bit of chorus because there's just some chorus moments in the show. Just dead simple, kind of subtle, nothing crazy. What have we got next? The, the trem. Uh, I went for the 60s bias trem because it's just a little bit less intense. Uh, and the harmonic tremolo doesn't quite do the tremolo thing that you expect. Um, it, it, it doesn't serve the right purpose, the, the right function, sorry, in this context. So I went with the 60s bi bias trem. Sounds good. Good. A uh, bit of a plate reverb. I was thinking I might switch that to a spring reverb. Uh, so I'll try that next week, on next re week's rehearsal, and just have a chat with the other guitar player and kind of see what is what with that. But uh, either way, that sounded good. And then of course, we're using snapshots, because why wouldn't you? If you've got a Helix and a Variax, of course. Um, so with the snapshots, with that said, when I'm on my regular electric, patch. I've got this volume all the way at 100%. So we've got full volume. I have this at 0%. So that means that entire line of DSP is just straight up muted. There's no farting around with volume knobs or whatever. I can just change the patch and immediately the Variax is muted or the McCarty's muted, whatever. Speaking of the Variax, let's have a look-see through all of my Variax patches. Um, we'll start with the 12-string electric. Of course, we're going through a deluxe reverb, again, just EQ'd slightly differently. Slightly differently. Um, I think levels and stuff were pretty good last night as well, so I don't think I'll need to change much. Uh, so with the 12 string electric, what are we modeling on the Variax? We are modeling chime number four, which is a Rickenbacker of some description. Very good sounding 12 string emulation, I think. More than good enough for, for the pit stuff. And of course, just a little bit of a plate reverb as well, because we like reverb here. We use it as much as possible. And of course, on all of the Variax specific patches, the volume is at a hundred percent, all of it. Then we move on to our acoustic. What acoustic are we modeling, you say? Number five, which I think is the big jumbo thing that they've got in, in, in the Variax. Sound, sounded really good. Um, what's, what song is it? Um, My Eyes Are Dorgy. That's the song that I play. Oh, I think that's the first song I play acoustic on in the, in the show. Um, God, it sounds good. In context, of course. Like, if you put it up against a, just a regular acoustic guitar, acoustically, it, you can hear that it's not an acoustic guitar. But in context, with vocals, keys, drums, bass, everything, it works a treat. And that's what I think is the strength of the Variax in this context. Does it sound like a dead-on mic'd up acoustic guitar? Does it sound like a dead-on whatever? Not perfectly, right? I'm sure there are IRs that I could get that would make it perfect, but for the purposes of what I'm using it for, which is pit work, where um, I, I think I'm really lucky actually in this pit, there's gonna be a fair bit of space, but for the sake of, you know, not cramming my car full of expensive gear, uh, and gear that I don't have, that I don't wanna buy, having this guitar is, is perfect. So, that's the acoustic patch. No EQ on it, I might, 
I might tweak that, but again last night in the rehearsal it sounded grouse. mandolin. So the mandolin has some EQ on it, just taking out a bit of the low end kind of stuff just for the sake of getting it a little bit close to that, for lack of a better term, tinny mandolin sound. Um, now in order to achieve the mandolin sound uh, that you will have, will have heard um, just before, we go over to the Variax and we're modeling the, the parlor shaped acoustic guitar on that one plus a little bit of a, a, a simple pitch. We're basically emulating the eight string nature of, of that with that, um, with that block there. And I should also say, even though I could have um, <laughs> left it in kind of standard guitar tuning to make my life easy. I, uh, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to be kind of as faithful to a mandolin as possible. So I changed the tuning and I also turned off the low six, uh, the low E and the A string because of course the mandolin is a four string, well, eight string instrument. So we've got the correct tuning there, um, kind of programmed in which is fantastic. A little bit of a pain for me, <laughs> I'll be honest, but um, I, th I only play one mandolin bit, so it's, it, it, it's, it's fine, it's fine. Third patch is the sitar, the electric sitar. So this is just nice and easy, the electric sitar um, patch thing in in the helix. Helix. Uh, it sounds pretty good. Got it going through that that amp. No pitch, just a touch of reverb. <laughs> And then lastly, the baritone. The baritone is just um, like a custom setting, but it's basically just strat, neck pickup. Bob's your uncle. And then we have the tuning. So the tuning changes, and this is, I, I think I only play this in sherry, uh, kind of playing a bum, 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 that part, but harmonizing with, I think, the the guitar, the other guitar is playing like the, the melodic line and I'm harmonizing along with it. Uh, sounded really good last night. In context, sounds grouse. So that right there is everything.
we need to know about my Helix patch for uh, Jersey Boys specifically, but kind of more broadly how I use the Variax for theatre stuff. So we'll end that video there, but if you do have any questions about Variax or Line 6 Helix stuff whatsoever, just let me know and I'll endeavour to answer them because I think this is a great tool for someone like myself who's doing pit stuff. I think it's just, I think it's very good. I think it's a very good thing. Oh, and if you want the patch, if you just so happen to be playing Jersey Boys and you've got a very accent helix <laughs> and you want that, want the patch, feel free, just let me know and I'll shoot it over to you. Because, yeah, why not? But that'll do for this video. Thank you very much for, for tuning in. I massively appreciate it and, and hello to all the new subscribers as well. So that's, that's very cool. Um, we will leave that there. Take care of yourselves. Go play some guitar. Go have some fun. And I'll catch you guys next week in the next video. See you later.